Well, good morning, everybody. And I know it's unusual for me to be standing here on a Saturday. But due to the upcoming we uh, undesirable weather, and all of y'all over 60 will get that. <laughs> but we're having the services on a Saturday. Although with God, every day is a service. So let us all keep in prayer that the, our new governor today uh, give him strength and knowledge to carry out his job and pray for this weather that's coming in that they say is going to be some power outages due to it. Lord, I hope not. So pray for everybody, you know, when they have the power outage, if they have a power outage and they don't have a means of keeping themselves warm, pray for them. And let, matter of fact, let's just pray that there's no power outage. But let's go to the Lord in prayer. Our dear, most gracious Heavenly Father, we thank you for this day, Lord. And Lord, we know you got your hand on Virginia, Lord. And we just ask now with this upcoming storm that there would be no power outages, Lord. Just let it be a nice snowfall so the kids can get out there and have fun. I ask all in Jesus' name. Amen. All right, we're going to start off on chapter 29 of Genesis, where Jacob meets Rachel. Then Jacob went on his journey and came into the land of his people of the east. Now, see, um, his father told him to go to there than not to marry a, a Canaanite woman. And he looked, and behold, a well in the field, and lo, there were three flocks of sheep lying by it. Far out of that well they watered the flocks with a great stone that was upon the well's mouth. What are you talking about? Um, it's sort of like uh, they use in uh, other countries um, a lever action door that they'll pull down on the lever and it'll open up and allow the water to flow out. So here they was moving a stone and let the water flow so the sheep can get water. And with three flocks there and another one fixing to come, that's a whole lot of sheep. And thither were all the flocks gathered, and they rolled the stone from the well's mouth and watered the sheep and put the stone again upon the well's mouth in his place. Open it up, close it. Their, their version of a, our water taps. <laughs> and Jacob said unto them, My brethren, whence be ye? And they said, Of Haran are we. He's like, who y'all? <laughs> and he said unto them, Know ye Laban, the son of Nahor? And they said, We know him. And he said unto them, Is he well? And they said, He is well. And behold, Rachel, his daughter, cometh with the sheep. He like, do you know Laban, son of Nahor? Yeah, we know him. Is he in good health? Is he doing good? We get that a lot. We're, we're out running around. Hey, how's so and so doing? So he was basically doing the same thing. But what they didn't know, he was their cousin. And he said, Lo, is it yet high day? Neither is the time 
that the cattle be should be gathered together, water ye sheep and go and feed them. And they said, We cannot until all the flocks be gathered together, until they roll the stone from the well's mouth, then we water the sheep. And he's like, Go ahead, feed your feed your flock here. I'll wait. He said, No, we can't. They're not all here. Now, parents are like that with their children. When, when it's dinner time, she really don't want to get and let everybody start eating until all the kids are there. Right, in. And mom always wants the whole family together when it's dinner time. And if you cook like Mary, it ain't hard to get everybody together. Mary makes the best biscuits. She's not paying us no crying. <laughs> I said, you make the best biscuits. <laughs> and while he yet spake with them, Rachel came with her father's sheep, for she kept them. In other words, she was the shepherd for her father. And it came to pass when Jacob saw Rachel, the daughter of Laban, his mother's brother, and the sheep of Laban, his mother's brother, that Jacob went near and rolled the stone from the well's mouth and watered the flock of Laban, his mother's brother. He saw her coming, and he's like, hey, let me be a gentleman and do this for them. And Jacob kissed Rachel and lifted up his voice and wept. Wait a minute. Did I miss something here? No. Nope. And lifted up his voice and wept. And Jacob told Rachel that he was her father's brother and that he was Rebekah's son. And she ran and told her father. He was so happy to see her, he kissed her and started crying. Uh, I'm, I'm, your, I'm your cousin here. <laughs> and it came to pass when Laban heard the tidings of Jacob, his sister's son, that he ran to meet him and embraced him and kissed him and brought him to his house and he told Laban all these things. And Laban said to him, Surely thou art my bone and my flesh. And he abode with them in the space of a month. That was a common greeting for him, right? To come up there, hug him, and kiss him. Now, he didn't kiss him on the lips. He kissed him right here on the neck. And that was a common greeting for them. And then he said, yeah, you are related to me. Stay here for as long as you need. And he stayed for a month. Probably couldn't take it after that. <laughs> I know sometimes we have uh, relatives that come visit that we just wish they would hurry up and leave. And Laban said unto Jacob, Because thou art my brother's Otis, showed us that therefore serve me for not. Tell me, what are thy wages? Hey, if you're going to work for me, how much do you want me to pay you? I mean, we get that. That's the same thing going on today. You want to go to work at some place like McDonald's, you want to know what the rate of pay is. So things ain't changed over 2,000 years. And Laban had two daughters. The name of the elder was Leah, and the name of the youngest was Rachel. Leah was tender-eyed, but Rachel was beautiful and well-favored. 
And Jacob loved Rachel and said, I will serve thee seven years for Rachel, thy youngest daughter. And Laban said, It is better that I give her to thee that, than that I should give her to another man abiding with me. And Jacob served seven years for Rachel, and they seemed unto him but a few days, for he loved for his love he had for her. I, that's the one thing you don't see much in this day and time. You don't see couples staying together that long. I mean, I've seen, I've heard some of them say, well, you know, I'll marry her, but if it don't work out, I can. That's, that's not the right thing. Like I said last Sunday, there's three people in the marriage. God, the husband, and the wife. And that's the only way it's going to last. And there's, and there's some husbands and wives in this church that's actually doing that. And one of them's been together coming on 37 years, isn't it, Dr. Cash? You don't see them. Mom and dad, they were over 50 years together. So, if you have God in your marriage, everything's going to last. And Jacob said to Laban, Give me my wife, for my days are fulfilled, that I might go unto her. And Laban gathered together all the men of the place and made a feast. And it came to pass in the evening that he took Leah, his daughter, and brought her to him, and he went in unto her. And Laban gave Unto his daughter Leah, Zilphas, his maid for a husband and for a handmaid. And it came to pass that in the morning, behold, it was Leah, and he was, and he said to Laban, "What is this thou hast done to me? Did I not serve thee for Rachel? Wherefore hast thou beguiled me?" And Laban said. It must not be so done in our country to give the younger daughter before the firstborn. Fulfill her week, and we will give thee this also for the service, which thou shalt serve with me yet seven other years. There's a similarity between the men and the women then. Um, the firstborn male always got everything that he had, the blessings. Now, with the women, the firstborn is the first one to get married. It just can't skip that one and go right to the younger one. And that was the way, probably with some of the Jewish community, it's probably still doing it the same thing. But in today's society, it probably doesn't hold too well. I mean, some of them has learned differently. But he's telling them, hey, work another seven years and I'll give you Rebecca. I mean, Rachel, not Rebecca, Rachel. <laughs> and Jacob did so and fulfilled her week, and he gave him Rachel, his daughter, to wife also. And Laban grew, gave to Rachel his daughter, Bilhah, his handmaid, to be her maid. And he went in also unto Rachel, and he loved also Rachel more than Leah, and served with him, yet seven other years. 
he ended up with two wives. And I bet he never forgot their birthdays. <laughs> I bet he never forgot the anniversaries either. And when the Lord saw that Leah was hated, he opened her womb, but Rachel was barren. And Leah conceived and bare a son, and she called his name Reuben. For she said, Surely the Lord hath looked upon my, my affliction. Now therefore my husband will love me. She had something going on with her eyes. And a lot of the men probably made fun of her. Probably a lot of women. But because he wasn't attracted to Leah and basically said, like she said, hated me. Well, God's going to fix the fix it up. Rachel was barren, which means she wasn't giving birth to no kids. But Leah, he gave her a son. Now, this is his firstborn son now. And she conceived again and bare a son and said, Because the Lord had heard that I was hated, he has therefore given me this son also. And she called his name Simeon. And she conceived again and bare a son. A third one now. And said, now this time will my husband be joined unto me because I have bore him three sons. Therefore was his name called Levi. And you need to remember that name, Levi, because it's going to come up later on. And she conceived again and bare a son. And she said, now I will praise the Lord. Therefore she called his name Judah and left bearing. So she ended up four or five kids, all males. But two of them, we're going to hear about later on, Levi and Judah. We're going to hear about both of them later on. But God was trying to teach um, Jacob a lesson here. He was trying to teach her, look, don't hate her because of the way she looks. Unfortunately, that's what happened in today's world. If you look a little different, they might, well, kids can be really cruel about that. They can be really mean, especially if they're not raised up in a Christian home. I mean, there's a lot of kids out there who have some physical defects. And me, Alan, both, being Army brats, we traveled a whole lot. And I guarantee you, we had our share of troubles because being Southern boys and a lot of times being stationed like in upstate New York and Ohio, you get that Southern accent to you and they make fun of you and and then try to push your buttons well sometimes they did push my buttons and I I, I disconnected their power source <laughs> but then I started learning to, hey ain't no need to do all that the only time I really jumped up in their faces when they talk bad about mom and dad, although any kid's going to do that. But today's kids, they don't care. They're going to do what they want. To. Mom and dad can't control them because the courts have taken away their ability to discipline the children. I mean, you can discipline the children without beating the daylights out of them. I mean, my daughter, 
way I used to discipline her was I take her tricycle away. I would put it up on top of the refrigerator where she could see it and said, now if you want your tricycle back, you have to apologize and mean it. Well, after her standing there staring at that tricycle for a while, she was just as stubborn as mom and dad and me. About an hour later, she couldn't say, Daddy, I'm sorry. She'd never had her butt whipped. She was punished in other ways other than slapping her. And now she's a deputy sheriff. But kids these days, they don't know what it means to say yes sir, no sir, yes ma'am, no ma'am, th please and thank you. A lot of them don't know that. They're like, hey, give me that. I want that. And sometimes I see them do that at Walmart, and I'm just like, Ugh. but I know I can't get in the middle of it. Government has taken a lot of parents' ability away to take care of the children the way they need to be taken care of. The old school ways from when we were kids. Although back when we were kids, we can be out walking the streets after the sun goes down and not worry about nothing. Except for mom, she said, when those street lights come on, your butt's in the house. And would you believe that they had that in one of the uh, movies on TV? It was... Um, Perry, um, huh? Not, no, not Perry. Um, that black actor that that dresses up like a woman, Medea. Yes, yeah. It, she had. They actually put that in one of the scenes when she was a foster mom for this little girl. She, little girl, where you been? And, you know. She said, don't you know when that street light comes on, your butt's supposed to be in this house? I'm like, flashback. But kids these days don't know that. They don't know it at all. Last night, when I was getting gas in my truck and gas for my generator, I was sitting there, listen, pumping the gas, and off of the distance, just past... BB and T, you can hear gunshots going off. Now, I don't know if they were target practicing or what, but it was dark outside, so what kind of targets is he shooting at? Kids these days, they, they don't have no respect for nobody because they are not raised with this. This right here will tell you how to raise your kids. This right here will tell you how to run your finances and your marriage. That's the most important one because a lot of these kids is out there running these streets. They're from separ separated homes. Now, Mom used to say for a young teenage girl, the best way to keep them from getting them pregnant is giving them an aspirin. I got curious one day and asked her, what do you mean by that? She goes, the tighter she holds that aspirin between her knees, the less likely she's going to get pregnant. Today we have babies having babies. So, people, Love your children. Let them come in and learn the word of God and teach them the Bible. Find you a good Bible-believing church and start there. 
That's what Sunday schools are for, to teach them. Sunday school, like regular worship service, are two of the most important services all week long. Because in Sunday school, you study the Word. Worship service, you get preached the Word. So let's just start filling churches, although a lot of them not open anymore, but the ones that are open, let's fill them up. Let's turn this country around. Fill up the churches and, and go back to being a, a country that believes in God. Let's go to the Lord in prayer. Our dear most gracious Heavenly Father, I thank you for this lesson, Lord. And Lord, I just pray that with this weather coming in, that there's no power outages. And Lord, I just ask that you just be on Dr. Cash, lift him up as he gives the message today. And it, it may, may it touch somebody's heart, mind, and soul. I ask God in Jesus' name, amen.